Alrighty. Um, so sorry for uh, taking a while before being able to schedule this. I've had a play that I've been at, and so I have not been able to have basically any evenings free or any free time for the last several weeks. But yeah, cool that we get to do this now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so my overall point here is a pretty simple one. Um, when measuring best versus worst in terms of animals on the earth, we would measure that by which animals are contributing best or worst to the advancement of that earth. So if a species is beneficial to the universe and is increasing the odds of success for all species uh, together as a whole, then that species could be considered beneficial to the universe and to the earth. But if a species is detrimental to that earth, then that species would be a negative influence on the earth and would be considered uh, neg negative or, or worst. So when it comes to humans, let's talk about what humans are. Humans are rational, which is, in, which is something that sets us apart from most other animals, with the exception of uh, dolphins and mice. Uh, but even dolphins and mice, we are more rational than dolphins and mice. So we have the capability to, to do great things uh, if we could ever figure out what those great things are uh, or figure out whatever sort of purpose there may be for the benefit of the universe. But as of yet, um, we either do not know such a purpose or we may not even be capable of knowing such a purpose due to the limitations of a finite mind. So all we have is the question of how much have we done for the earth so far? And the simple fact is we have been a significant detriment to the earth. Uh, let's just look at a couple of the different ways. For one thing, we have uh, uh, overwhelmingly destroyed the majority of the earth's resources. In fact, estimates currently say that by 2050, half of all plants and animals will face extinction. Uh, the vast majority of which is due to habitat being taken by, by humans and due to pollution being introduced into the air by humans and due to warming in the environment or overall change in the climate due to humans. All of these are destructive forces that humans cause that no other species even comes close to. Uh, moreover, the humans are personally responsible for a breakdown in the ozone layer. By introducing foreign chemicals into the air, we have been personally responsible for breaking down the protective layers that protect the earth from uh, the sun and from light rays that come into the earth. This will be incredibly detrimental. It already is detrimental to, to humans as far as uh, uh, sunburn and things like that. The, the, the danger of sunburn has increased as humans continue to introduce foreign chemicals into the air. And that will continue if the ozone layer continues to break down uh, until there will be no ability to protect the earth from light, at which point the entire earth could be destroyed. This is a simple fact that the United States, that, uh, not the United States, that, America, uh, that, that humans in general have, have caused uh, that no other species even comes close to doing. One last thing I will talk about that humans do is that of weapons of warfare. While other animals may fight with each other and may eat with each other in natural ways, humans introduce dangerous weapons which further destroy the atmosphere. We also have the capability to completely wipe out the entire face of the earth with weapons such as nuclear weapons, with biological and chemical weapons. Our intelligence doesn't have any actual benefit to the earth, but it does have the capability to completely destroy the earth. When compared to any other animal, humans are a net loss. We don't benefit the earth, but we certainly do harm it. Okay, so, okay, so when, you're defining, when you're defining... Okay, so okay, I'm getting so really I'm getting strong, strong echo, strong right, echo now. right now. Like, I can hear myself back. But, um, so when you're defining what is the worst animal, how are you defining that? Because I think you said, like, what, what's contributing to the advancement of the earth? But are you right. talking specifically about, like, do humans benefit the Earth, or are we talking about conscious beings, or what specifically? Well, I mean, I, I think it's obvious that humans are more intelligent and more capable than any other species, but in terms of our overall contributions to the universe, uh, our value to the, to the Earth, to the planet, 
if if let, let's say that yeah that, but wait wait but the the debate the, the debate is isn't go ahead the debate isn't humans are the worst animal for earth we're the worst animal on earth so sure. in order to answer that kind of question it's kind of a moral claim so you have to have some sort of framework for determining you know what's good what's bad so are we talking about like are we good for animals are we good for conscious beings who can feel pain or are you sp saying like specifically are we good for the earth or the ozone layer or anything specific like that uh, it's more general like, like for instance if, if, if let's say we weren't humans let's say we were a council of mice or a council of all the animals and they got together and they wanted to rank which of the animals go from worst to best how what, which ones would they put at the top and the bottom the the animal that contributes to the the most detriment to the universe is humans and if all the animals were to vote on which which animal is the worst, clearly humans would be at the bottom. Okay, so I don't think that's a workable moral framework because first of all, like if animals are going to vote, first of all, like animals aren't rational. But if we assume that they're rational in their in their own self-interest, they'd probably vote that we're the worst because we're harming them. But that doesn't mean that necessarily they have a good moral framework. When you say like humans are a detriment to the universe, that doesn't really make sense. Like the universe is going to exist whether we're there or not. So detriment to the universe kind of assumes implicitly some kind of moral framework where you're saying, okay, this is what's contributing and this is what's a detriment, which is I think something you haven't stated explicitly, but is important to define. So yeah. I would outline that when we're talking about this kind of thing, are humans the worst animal on earth? We should talk about it from a moral framework or for example, something like the well-being of conscious creatures, you know, happiness, utilitarianism, any any kind of framework like that. I think in that general area is what I would propose to judge this round. So the way that I'm going to present my argument is that humans have created the potential for advancement of, civ of civilization that no other animal has. So humans have advanced civilization and technology to a point that's unattainable by any other animal, specifically due to our rationality. We've done more than develop farming and master fire. We've made it possible to go to the moon. We've made it possible to access most human knowledge in seconds through the internet. And we've disseminated knowledge and technology to an astonishing degree. So the last time that dinosaurs existed was hundreds of millions of years ago. The reason is because an asteroid wiped them out and forced life to basically start over. So to protect this new era of species from a dinosaur-like extinction, it requires us to become interplanetary. And the only species that can do that is humans. When we start to inhabit other planets, we protect life to a far greater extent. When you look at things like Elon Musk and SpaceX trying to go to Mars, in about a billion years, the sun's uh, luminescent factor, luminosity, I mean, will increase by about 10%, which means that the Earth will move out of the habitable zone of the solar system. And if we don't continue advancing and moving to other planets, everything on this isn't like the great dying of 99% of species die. This is 100.0%. Everything is over. So if we don't allow humans to advance civilization and move to other planets, everyone will go extinct. So the potential that humans create for good in the future, we are the only ones who have made that possible. And because that allows for billions and billions of years in the future, if we start moving around different planets, that outweighs the potential loss of going extinct on this one planet because it's only a billion years. All right. So first, you responded to my overall, uh, just the, the overall way I was looking at the at the resolution by uh, claiming that we needed to look at something not as a detriment to the universe because we can't really see what is a detriment to the universe. But I wasn't really talking. I, I know I used the word universe, but I, I meant a more a detriment to the Earth uh, because this is we are animals on this Earth. So it's a question of what benefit or harm we have for the earth and ultimately you seem to go with that same framework yourself because your arguments were also talking about the benefit that or that humans can offer to the earth uh the only argument you had that that wasn't within that framework was you said that humans have significantly advanced civilization uh well my response to that would be that we've advanced civilization for ourselves but just because we've advanced civilization for ourselves doesn't mean we've been a benefit to the earth in any way whatsoever. We benefited ourselves, but why is that the framework through which we say, therefore, humans are the best? If beavers build particularly special dams, we don't go, wow, they did something amazing for beavers, therefore, they are the best animal. Just because you benefit your own species doesn't mean you're the best species. You would have to do something that uh, transcends your own species. Uh, unfortunately, when it comes to humans, at least thus far, the only things that we have done have been a detriment 
to all other species. Um, you then talked about how going to Mars is something that we can uh, afford and that, that our technology uh, has the capability to do things that will be beneficial in the future. Uh, the first thing that I would say to that is what you're saying is potential. You're not saying actual current status. In the current status, what humans have done has been significantly worse for the Earth than any other animal has been able to do. It is possible because of human rationality and because of our ability to think of new methods that that could benefit the Earth, we could in the future be more of a benefit than any other animal. And I, I actually think that's a great point. I hadn't really thought of that before, but that, that is an excellent point. Um, that if we were to find a way to potentially like have some sort of Noah's Ark or, or something and make Mars a Noah's Ark, we take all the animals from the Earth and we move them to Mars, uh, that would continue and that would be a benefit to, to the species within, within Earth. Um, if, if there is this doomsday scenario that you're talking about where, uh, I guess, in, in a few hundred billion years, I hadn't heard about this. Can, can, can you uh, follow up on this a little bit more? What, what exactly is happening to the Earth? Is it because of human activity or is it just... Our, our, no. our Earth will eventually cease to exist just because of the, the path it's on? How does that work? That's So what I was talking about was the sun. So like the, the way that stars work is the, the sun's luminosity will begin to increase. So it's going to start emitting more heat. And so the habitable zone, which is like the distance from the sun at which life can feasibly exist, starts moving outward. So as it moves away from Earth, it goes from Earth to Mars. And therefore, Earth becomes uninhabitable, but Mars then becomes inhabitable. That's interesting. So, so how yeah. long how long do we have till that happens? I I think it's about a billion years. About a billion years. So yeah. All right. So so in in unfathomably uh, long amount of time, comparatively, uh, the amount of time that humans have been on this Earth is I, I'm actually not sure of the exact numbers, but it, it's it's certainly not even close to a billion. It's it's, it's in the uh, the thousands of millions, depending on, on which which group you're looking at. Um, and, and and the amount of damage we've been able to wreak in this tiny, in, in infinitesimally small amount of time is extraordinary. And if we were to have the same amount of time, and, and uh, we, we will most likely continue to, to de destroy the Earth even further than we currently already have, I, you would have to show some sort of means to, to prove that we will make it this billion years before we can finally offer some sort of benefit to, to the Earth that we don't currently, uh, that we have not currently offered. Uh, yeah, and I think that's all I'll say for now. Okay, so... I'll start out with a detriment to the earth point. So you say that like the, that's kind of the framework that I'm going for, but I think uh, there's, there might be a misunderstanding here, but when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the, the well being of conscious creatures, I think is the way that Sam Harris puts it, but basically like the happiness or suffering of things that are aware. So, you know, animals would count under this category and humans would count under this category. When you say, like, what benefit do we provide to the Earth? I would say that has the same issue as what benefit do we provide to the universe, right? Like, if we make the Earth 10 million degrees hotter, the Earth doesn't care. The, the things that care are the animals on the Earth and the humans on the Earth. So that's the way that we have to judge our moral framework. It doesn't make any sense um, any other way. So when I was talking about civilization, you say that, like, that's, that's pointless. It doesn't really matter to the argument I'm making. But the, the point I was making there was to set up the fact that we have advanced enough that our technology allows us to do things like go to Mars and extend the lifespan of just life in general on Earth. Um, you say that that's a potential and it's not current, but the issue here is that humans are the, the ones that created that potential. Without humans, it's not, it's not like snakes are going to create rocket ships and go to the moon, right? That's, that's not something that would happen without humans. So we are the ones who've created the potential to do that. And as such, we are the ones who've generated the ability in the future to go to Mars. So you said that we, do a, we did a lot of damage in a very short time, but I would argue that that was largely due to a kind of growing pain. And right now we're trying to cut back on that. So for example, during the Industrial Revolution, the amount of emissions that were created in Great Britain, for example, were massive and it was ridiculous. You know, people were getting diseases all the time because of it. But 
we started to cut back on that. We've done things like develop renewable energy technology. And recently there was a person who developed a technology that's literally designed to suck CO2 out of the atmosphere and convert it to fuel that we can use. So when we see these kind of advances in technology where we say, okay, we're harming the earth, but now let's try to stop that, then that shows us that in the future, it's very likely that humans will begin to slow down, if not entirely stop their damage to the earth. So I would argue that it's, it's unlikely that humans will cause extinction. And therefore, the potential benefit that humans have created is far greater. And even if you think that humans could cause extinction, remember, you say like a billion years is an unfathomable amount of time. But when we when we talk about giant numbers like billion, things like that, we have to we have to look at it relatively. So you say like a billion is a really long time, but I would say we're going to live far more than a billion years if we're able to go interplanetary or interstellar. And that's something that only humans have allowed us to do. So the benefit of allowing humans to advance civilization and technology is orders of magnitude larger than the detriment that we've created to the earth as of right now. Okay, so the first thing you said was that you, uh, you, you argued for the well-being of conscious creatures as opposed to just the well-being of the Earth, which I think is fair. I think mean, Because you're right, um, a, uh, a rock does not care what happens to it, but a frog does care what happens to it. So when we, when we judge uh, the, the efficiency of the Earth and the, the, the creature, we would be judging based on uh, what is best for creatures who actually care what happens to them. So I, I agree with your framework there. I, I, it's more or less what I was already saying, but I, I think I, it's fair that we would clarify it to well-being of conscious creatures. Um, you said that we have advanced enough to be able to expand life in general for people on Earth. Yes, but we only do that for humans. We haven't expanded the life expectancy of frogs. If anything, we've actually decreased the life expectancy of frogs. We've taken away their habitat. We eat them. Uh, although I, I don't have a problem with eating animals because that is part of the natural the natural way. There's nothing wrong with eating other animals. There is something wrong with uh, with with destroying the capability for, as as you call it, the well being of conscious creatures. And if what we are doing is destroying the capability of a species to be able to exist. Current studies suggest that by 2050, 50% of conscious creatures uh, will no longer exist uh, because of what humans are doing as we take away their habitat, as we increase the, the climate of the earth, as we break down the ozone layer above us, as we, as we harm their ability to exist. Humans, as of this point, have been in detriment to the well-being of conscious creatures other than ourselves. But like I said, we don't judge the efficiency of a, of a species based on what a, a, the species does for itself. We judge it based on what it does for all conscious creatures. And, and humans oh, as a whole have been problematic for all conscious creatures. Uh, you said that without humans, snakes won't create rocket ships, but they also wouldn't need to create rocket ships. There's no reason for snakes to have to con 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 create rocket ships. There's no advantage to creating rocket ships. The only advantage that would happen from rocket ships is first of all, humans could maybe save us from the exact problem that we are creating right now with the way that we destroy our earth. We might need those rocket ships to flee. Or the other thing that you, you pointed out, and I will give you this, in a billion years, uh, we might need rocket ships. And so maybe in a billion years, snakes will need rocket ships. But at least as of this point, they don't need rocket ships and they won't need rocket ships for another billion years. So as of right now, snakes, are not causing a detriment to society, humans are. So you talk about uh, how right now humans causing a detriment is just a growing pain and that we're trying to cut back on that. And you, you referenced the Industrial Revolution. Now, this is, uh, I mean, to a certain extent, I think this is true. I mean, you do see more of a, of a focus uh, from humans today on trying to preserve the environment that we live in, uh, on trying to, to be reasonable stewards uh, of the earth that we live on. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that as of right now, we are like the, the resolution we have right now is humans are the worst animal on earth. Not that humans will eventually be the, the most beneficial creature on earth, but that as of right now, our status is that we are the worst. And I'm going to give an example here. Let's say that we have a absolutely brilliant uh, biologist, someone who ha has w within them the potential to eventually cure cancer, an absolutely brilliant 
uh, potential, but they haven't done anything yet. But what they have done, they have raped and murdered 10,000 teenage and preteen girls. As of right now, that person is one of, if not the worst, humans on Earth. They may have the potential to, in the future, be a benefit to, to society and, and to the advancement of uh, conscious creatures. But as of right now, what that person has done is a significant detriment. Humans, as a whole, as of right now, are in that same category. We have harmed the Earth significantly more than we have helped. And you're right. We have the potential within us to eventually help, but not right now. Okay, so you say when I'm talking about, like, we have the ability to expand life, that this only applies to humans, so that's not all conscious creatures, it's not as relevant. But I would argue that human moral advances have far surpassed the moral advances of other animals, and thus we are also the creatures with the greatest ability to care for other animals and actually improve their well-being. There is no other animal in the animal kingdom who fights about whether slavery is moral, whether freedom of speech is valuable, or whether torture should be permissible. You say that eating, th eating things in the wild is natural, but we shouldn't destroy the capability of animals to exist. I don't think this makes any sense because potential life is irrelevant to morality. We're talking about things that actually exist. And when you, when you say things like... Um, you know, if everyone goes extinct, then there's no potential for well-being. But if one species goes extinct, there's no reason that that species specifically needed to continue any more than it needed to begin to exist in the first place. As long as there are conscious creatures, there is the capacity for morality that we're able to sustain. So I don't think the extinction of animals is particularly relevant. Whether uh, the animal that dies is one, you know, like one sheep versus the last lion on earth has no significant effect on the moral detriment created by that death other than the potential effects on the ecosystem, for example. So that's something that human ra rationality has enabled us to do is create moral structures that no other animal has. You say that um, they're not, rockets aren't needed right now, you know, like snakes don't need rockets because we're the ones causing the problems. And you say that, you know, the sun, the sun problem is, is far off. I would also bring up the issue of, for example, a meteor. But when I'm talking about this kind of thing, I'll, I'll kind of lump this together with the issue of potential. It's like um, if someone if someone has the potential to do something, but they're doing bad things right now. So the biologist example, I think that that is a false analogy because what I would liken it more to is a biologist who has committed all of these terrible acts, but they have also developed rudimentary technology that is the beginning of developing a cure for cancer. So the development of technology is a necessary step if we're going to be able to become interplanetary. And humans have created technology. That's something we've already done. That's the reason that we're on this website right now arguing. So that's not a potential. That's a reality that already exists. And that is one step in a series of many steps that's necessary to become interplanetary. So the, the human ability and action of actually creating that technology just because it's not the final step doesn't mean it's not something we've already done and something that's very important to the advancement and, uh, and sustenance of life in general so that's what i would say about um arguing right now uh, let me ask you this um let's let's take the biologist example um so so let's say that you are in government and you are fully aware and, and you have all the evidence that this fucked up biologist has raped and murdered 10,000 preteen and teenage girls. Um, and yet he has a cool looking lab experiment that he says could one day cure cancer. And he says it's going to take, you know, a couple thousand, a couple, it's, it, well, we got to put it in context of human. It's going to take him 30 years. And during that time, he's going to continue raping and murdering preteen and teenage girls. What would you do? I think there's a, there's an issue here with moral principles, but for the for the sake of the analogy, let's assume that there there aren't any effects of, for example, pardoning this person that affect you know whether other people in the future or right now are going to be pardoned. 
in that case, I would say that we should let him live, but on the spe- or, or let him be free, but on the specific condition that the one of the issues here that we're talking about is in this case, this biologist is the only person who has the capability of developing that cure. No one else will be able to do this for in the human context centuries. So you want to, you have to weigh the different consequences. And this is the same argument I was making is, you know, he's raping, you know, maybe a hundred, a thousand girls, but the number of people who will be saved in a hundred years who would have died from cancer is vastly greater. So when we do the weighing, when we talk about a cost benefit analysis, the benefit of keeping that biologist on developing that cure for cancer absolutely outweighs the harms. But you are assuming that they are valuable, even though they have never existed. You are weighing people who never have existed and won't ever exist uh, versus versus the lives of girls who currently exist, uh, who will. Wait, you, wait, you yeah. said people who won't ever exist. What does that mean? Um, look, look, I'm actually coming back to the to the Earth example. Um, you, you, the, the, with, with Earth, we have uh, this this concept of of uh, it's going to explode. It's gonna it's gonna go away, and that's gonna be it. And at that point, nobody will care anymore. And it, won't, it won't matter. The only reason why it does matter, it will matter for the people who are on the earth at that moment. It will matter for the frogs who are on the earth at that moment. And then nobody else will care. That's it. Um, uh, so, so actually, let me just go through so, some of the, the arguments that you had here. Um, so first of all, you said that uh, a, uh, a billion is not a long time uh, because humans live for that long. Um, Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I that's from the other speed. I'm sorry. Uh, you said that human moral advances have far advanced more than any other animal, um, and that no other animals worry about slavery or torture. And for this reason, humans should be considered better than animals. However, animals don't care. They act on instinct. The only reason why humans have to focus on slavery and torture and all these things is because we are rational enough to notice it in the first place. It would not be a problem, and it isn't a problem. In the same way that animals eat each other, and we don't think that's a bad thing, it also isn't a bad thing when animals enslave each other because they're just acting on instinct. For hum- you're, 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 again, using humanity and what humanity wants to try to say, therefore, humanity is great. Just because humanity wants something and because just because humanity makes it happen doesn't mean, therefore, humanity is the best. To go back to beavers, just because beavers make a better dam, uh, and they say the standard for all animals is that they have the best dam, and therefore beavers are the best animal because we have the best dams. Uh, no, no, it, the standard would be based on on what actually impacts all the animals according to what actually matters to them. And the only reason why slavery and torture matter to humans is because we're rational enough to care about that thing in the first place. But it's not something that animals care about. Um, you say that uh, if one species goes extinct, there's no reason it needed to exist. Um, but you said originally that the standard was that of the well-being of conscious creatures. So it sounds like what you're saying is if a bunch of species go extinct, but humans as a whole still exist, then it's okay. But what that would mean then is you're just saying humans are the best animals or a good animal because we're good for us. But that, again, is a circular setup. A best animal would be an animal that benefits the well-being of all conscious creatures, according to your own standard. And if other species are going extinct as a result of that one species, then you can't claim that as an advantage. Moreover, I, I know that you think that the benefit of conscious creatures is overall a good thing because the whole reason you think humans matter is because in the future they can prevent all species from going extinct with this billionaire with the billion year uh, explosion scenario. Uh, yeah, at which point we'll supposedly benefit all these other animals. Uh, but but if that's the case, we need to have other animals still alive. Uh, if humans are the only species that exist then we, we're, we, we would only be benefiting ourselves. It just sounds like all of your arguments ultimately come back to you like humans and you think they're the good animals because they're good for humans, but they aren't good for the other species, for other conscious creatures. All right, so I'm going to start off with, uh, you know, the Earth's going to explode and then no one cares because they're all dead. So I would say 
Um, would you would you consider it to be a bad thing? Let's say, like, if I develop a massive bomb in in my backyard, and this bomb will explode in one nanosecond and instantly wipe out our entire solar system, would you say that I that I should detonate that bomb? Uh, no. Why not? Uh, because it'd be bad for all conscious creatures. <laughs> okay, so would you say that it would be bad for conscious creatures for the entire Earth to be destroyed by the sun because it's inhabitable? Yes, you're right. Okay, so I'll move to, um, you say that animals act on instinct, so animals enslaving other animals is okay, and I'm going to strongly disagree with that. So when, when we're talking about, I would say that animals don't have moral responsibility in the same way that humans do because they aren't rational, but the actions that animals make have the same potential to affect well-being as humans' actions do. You know, like if a, if a, if I ate someone's head, you would be like, "Whoa, dude, um, you're a screwed up person." But if a spider eats someone else, eats another spider's head, yes, they were acting on instinct, but that's still extremely detrimental for the spider whose head is being eaten. So I think judging animals as if they don't have any morality is kind of stupid because all animals make actions that have consequences morally. Humans are just the ones that are intelligent enough to be able to weigh different consequences through a moral framework that actually makes sense rather than just acting on our evolutionarily determined instincts. So next uh, you say, so I say species being extinct, they didn't need to exist in the first place. And you're saying that this is, this is just assuming that humans are the best animal because we're good. So when I talk about the well-being of conscious creatures and you say like it has to benefit all conscious creatures, I'm not, I'm not drawing a distinction between the well-being of a human and the well-being of a dog. I think that they have similar value. So if we're talking about, for example, the earth, the earth ends, all the animals are dead, it would be better for humans to be alive than for nobody to be alive because those humans have the capacity to experience well-being, especially with the technology advanced to the level that it would be. So when we're talking about this, I don't think that we need to save every single animal, every single species in order for the well-being of conscious creatures to be benefited. Just because we're only only benefiting humans, that doesn't really matter. If I if I have, you know, 7 billion humans that I'm saving versus 7 billion animals as a combination of every species that ever existed, I wouldn't distinguish between the two. So, I think saying that I'm only focusing on humans, I, I'm not. I'm just focusing on them because they are the ones who have the potential to survive in the future. And like I said, with the morality point, we're the only animals who have the potential to actually help other animals. We're the only ones who have the intent to help other animals because we're the ones who have the rationality. So I don't think that we need to benefit every single species of animal in order for us to say that we are morally correct in this sense. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, I agree with that last thing that you said there, um, that you're not drawing a, a distinction between the well-being of human and the well-being of dog. Uh, we don't need to save every single species that there are. If you could save 7 billion humans versus 7, 7 billion, a collection of all animals, it'd be relatively similar. Uh, I agree that that is more or less uh, accurate. But at the same time, I think that what, what you have to remember is that 7 billion humans is absolutely dwarfed by the total amount of fish, animals, insects, mammals, reptiles. Uh, it, 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 we're talking in the trillions. So if we wipe out 50% of the Earth's living species, we're talking trillions. We're not talking billions, we're talking trillions. Uh, so so when, we're, when we're wiping out other species, it, according to your own standard, we are significantly causing the detriment uh, of overall species. We, we, are, we are a detriment uh, to conscious creatures. Uh, but let me go back up to to a couple of the other things you said there. Um, let's see. Oh, I think the only other argument that you had, if, if I'm reading this right, was uh, you said that if a human eats another human or eats their head, uh, that would be a bad uh, just for the benefit of conscious creatures. Sure, that, that it would be strange and absurd uh, and, and not something that we rational beings would want to have happen. But if a spider eats another spider, you say that that is still detrimental. Uh, but why? I, I don't. I don't think that is detrimental. That's just nature doing what nature does. Uh, there's nothing wrong with nature following instinctual desires for nature. Uh, there's nothing wrong when a, when a wolf eats a sheep. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there would be something wrong if uh, artificially a hundred million wolves were released into an island 
all of a sudden that island is going to be overwhelmed and, and all the living living life, the conscious creatures on that life are going to be significantly harmed. Uh, that would be a problem. Uh, but, but just a spider eating another spider or eating something else's head, according to its basic natural instinct, is not a bad thing. But when I use the example of 10 million wolves being introduced onto an island, that is essentially what the what humans have been doing. We have artificially uh, completely manipulated the food chain. We have manipulated the life forces around us. We've manipulated the, the, uh, the ability for other species to exist. Uh, when I talk about the 50% number, again, we got to talk about trillions. We're, we're literally talking about trillions. If by 2050, 50% of the the rational creatures, uh, well, not rational creatures, the uh, the the living creatures are are gone. Then we are talking significant detriment uh, caused by humans. Uh, so so when we weigh it, we have to weigh not just humans doing what's best for humans. In order to determine what the best or worst animals on Earth are, we determine what animals do the best for nature as a whole, for the Earth. And humans are significantly harming. The earth as a whole we could eventually get to the point where we do things that uh create a noah's ark scenario maybe we could do that in the in the, in the in the future after we've wiped out the potential for trillions of other beings okay so i'm going to start off with the argument that there are you know there are trillions more animals than there are humans First, I would point out that we're also going to live orders of magnitude longer if we are able to go interplanetary, as I said before. But the other argument that I would make is one talking about morality. So this also uh, ties into when you're talking about killing the potential of, you know, half the animals on Earth. In, in nature, without humans, life is nasty, brutish, and short. In the wild, animals think only of survival, and civilization has given us the opportunity to think about more than just sustenance. If technology and civilization continue advancing at any significant rate, then we will eventually, whether it takes a century or a hundred millennia, advance to the point that morality can be our only concern. And at this point, we can start treating animals with respect, ensuring their happiness and prosperity. Disease will be greatly reduced if not eradicated, and the evils of the natural world can only be mitigated by humans. So this is the advancement that the humans have created, our rationality has created, for the ability for us to treat humans with respect, the reason that we have animal cruelty laws. So you say that um, the spider, the spider, you know, eating another spider's head isn't bad because it's just natural, but it is bad when it's artificial. And I would say that this is a completely nonsensical argument. There's no distinction between artificial and natural effects on an animal. If a snake goes up and eats a dog's leg and it's now crippled for life or maybe you know it dies a slow painful death as it bleeds out screaming in pain i would say that that has the exact same moral effect as if i cut its leg off with a knife i don't see the distinction there you say that artificial is different from natural but you haven't provided any substantiation for that argument so i think when we look at the state that animals live in in the wild a constant state of fear and just trying to survive as opposed to the a, absolute comfort that we're able to live in, you know, with laptops and couches, if we can, if we're able to bring that to animals in the same way that we do to our pets right now in the future, that is a great benefit to the well-being of animals. I don't think that well-being only depends on survival. It also depends on happiness versus suffering. So, you know, that's, that's what I would say when you're talking about like releasing a hundred million wolves to kill all the animals is bad. And I would say, Yes, that absolutely is bad, but it would be just as bad if that happened naturally. It's just as bad when a mosquito gives someone malaria as when I inject someone with malaria. The mosquito doesn't have moral responsibility, but it did create a moral effect. So there's no reason to distinguish between artificial and natural when humans have the ability to end artificial, end artificial and natural evil. All right, so the first thing you say is that uh, humans will live orders of magnitude longer. Um, and that in the, in the future, no other species will have the capability to save any other species uh, from the impending doom of the sun. Um, okay, you know what? I'm going to give you this. Uh, we, we've talked about it for a while, but I think you're right. Uh, it does sound like that's correct. Uh, but at the same time, it, it is possible that humans could be the saving grace for the universe. Or it is also possible that before we get to that time, humans will have destroyed the Earth like we are currently on a trajectory to do so. We could literally wipe ourselves out. 
uh, through, through the power struggles of nuclear war or through the, uh, the uh, continuing climate change or through the breakdown of the ozone layer or through the deforestation and, and dehabitat that we are currently doing. We could devitalize our own food supply. We could, we could literally wipe ourselves out in the first place. We have no way of knowing the future, which is why this resolution is a question of now. It's not a, hum it's not a question of humans can be the worst animals on Earth. It's that as of right now, humans are the worst animal on Earth. We don't judge that by future potential. We judge that by current standards, by what, what we've done to this point. Um, so then you say that the ability to treat humans with respect is a human concept and that is good. Uh, well, I mean, you only say that because you like that. As, as a human, you like that. But you wouldn't care if you were some other species. Uh, you're, you're judging the, the efficiency of humans as a human, off of human, off of human wants. Uh, it's the same thing as the beaver. If the beaver wanted to judge it off of who has the best dam, that's an entirely subjective interspecies way of judging it. You have to judge it based on what it does for all species as a whole. The last thing you say is that there's no distinction between artificial and natural effects on an animal. You don't see the distinction between a snake biting a dog's leg off versus a human uh, cutting off the dog's leg. Um, in that one specific scenario, I agree with you. There is no, there is no distinction. But the distinction is percentage. Humans, as a percentage, have significantly cut down on the overall amount of species. Uh, the other species operate under natural ways of doing things, which has an ebb and flow. It creates a natural food chain. It isn't artificial. Like, like we, if you talk about the 100 million wolves, if you artificially throw 100 million wolves onto an island, it destroys the life force of that entire island. That's what humans are doing. But if you just let that island function naturally, all the animals will eat each other and be eaten, and it'll be a natural ebb and flow, and they will all exist together. That's okay. It's okay for a snake to bite a dog's leg off. It's not okay to introduce 100 million snakes into an island, at which point you would then have a problem. Okay. So I'm going to start off with the fact that um, it's possible that humans will also destroy Earth because that's a tra tra trajectory that we're on right now. So I would argue that there are two possibilities in the future of the human race. First is humans cause mass extinction. A small proportion of animals survive and continue to develop. Maybe they even advance enough in the future to take the place of humans and become interplanetary later, re uh, uh, rendering the human impact insignificant. Otherwise, life would continue as it did without humans, nasty brutish and short, until the sun wipes out all animals. Humanity's only effect is reducing the number of animals living in this state before we all eventually die. The second possibility is that humans don't cause, cause extinction. We become interplanetary and potentially interstellar. Civilization continues for billions of years, and we advance our moral frameworks to the point that the quality of life of all animals is substantially improved. Life continues for many times as long as it would have without humans and in a much better state. Thus, we can see that the potential benefits are much greater than the potential of harms. Again, this potential argument, I think, is the same as we had before. So you say that we should talk about what is, not what might be in the future. And I would argue that the created potential, like I said before, is. It is something that already exists. I have this laptop in front of me as evidence that technology has advanced significantly due to the development that humans have created. I agree that potential is not important when we're talking about, you know, like humans first developing fire. I wouldn't say like they're going to save the planet, but we have created that potential. That's something that is. It's something that currently exists right now. And it's something that we have done. No animal has or will do in the future. You say that I wouldn't care about morality the way that I do if I wasn't a human, if I was some other type of animal. But under this idea, there is no worst animal in the first place because there isn't any morality for animals at all. If humans didn't exist, you know, like life goes on, whatever, morality doesn't matter. If the frog dies, the frog dies. It's just natural. It's like that doesn't make any sense. The, the potential for humans to create good is something that's important because we can agree that pleasure is good and pain is bad, that animal suffering is bad. That's the whole reason you're saying humans are the worst animal on Earth is judging from a moral framework of the well-being of these animals. And finally, when we say there, there's a distinction of magnitude between natural and artificial, um, I agree. Uh, but the, the point of, in this is that there's no natural artificial distinction. So when I'm talking about the potential that humans have created, that's something it doesn't matter whether it's natural or artificial. We have to look at the harms that are created in nature and the potential for humans to solve them. 
Okay, so you say there are two possibilities in the future, one where we help the Earth, one where we destroy the Earth. Well, we don't know the future, so this is a wash. And even if it wasn't a wash, the resolution is about right now. Right now, we are the worst animals on Earth. And you say humans have no morality, but humans can create morality. Well, nature was better off without...